Before we start collecting data on any project that we're working on, we need to understand how much data we need to make accurate decisions. This is where our sample size comes into play. And hopefully, when you've looked at confidence intervals, you've also noted that in the denominator, the sample size has a big impact on the calculations for your confidence intervals. So understanding how much data you need is important before you even start collecting the data. So let's take a look at how we would calculate our sample size. Let's suppose that we want to know with 95% confidence whether the mean diameter of a fiber optic cable differs by 0.5 millimeters. We know from past experience that the standard deviation is 2 millimeters. We can use this information to calculate how many samples that we're going to need to collect to determine if there is actually a difference or not. Our sample size will be calculated based on our Z value, which is associated with the level of confidence that we need. We'll also use our sample standard deviation, our allowable error, and use that to calculate our value for N, which is our sample size. In this case, we know our value of Z is 1.96 because we're looking at 95% confidence. We also know our standard deviation, which is 2 based on the information provided. Our allowable error is 0.5 because that's how much we're looking for it differing by, which was our 0.5 millimeters. Using this information, then we'll calculate our sample size. Our value for N will be calculated by taking our value of Z, which was 1.96 in cell B2, multiplying it by our standard deviation, our sigma, which is in cell B13, dividing by our allowable error, which was 0.5 in cell B14, and then squaring that value. Now you'll also notice in this equation and in the graphical representation of the equation that the brackets do not have the bottom part. The brackets that only have the top part and not the bottom part mean you always round up. So here we're adding in the round up function and we're rounding up to the, the next full number. So in this case, it gives us a value of 62. When we do this calculation, if we end up with a value, let's say of 61.1, we would still want to round that up to 62 because if we only took 61 samples, we wouldn't truly be able to get to our 95% confidence. We would be less than 95% confidence. So our sample size is always going to be rounded up to the next whole number, regardless of whether or not you would typically round down or not. So always remember to round up with your sample size so that you make sure that you reach that level of confidence that you're solving for. In this case, we would need 62 samples to be 95% confident of whether or not the fiber optic cable mean diameter differed by the 0.5 millimeters.